What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video on my channel. Today we are going to set up Visual Studio Code with PySpark and multiple modules in our project. And therefore I would take you straight to it. So I have a uh, vanilla, so a clean Visual Studio Code installation here on my laptop. The only thing I did was to install the Python extension. So you can see it here. It's installed. So that's the setup for now. And I want to show you the very simple PySpark program that I have prepared. So basically we have one file, Python file application.py in the source folder, which implements a simple unit, which takes a data frame and returns a data frame. It also has a main, which in instantiates a Spark session, and then basically creates a small example data frame and executes this unit by passing in the data frame. On the other hand, I have implemented a test using unit test as documented in the Spark SQL documentation. Um, so what it does is basically it inherits from test case. So it's executable as a test. Then it we specify a setup class method which instanti uh, instantiates the Spark session and also a teardown class method which stops the Spark session. And then we have the test highest value, which is the unit we've implemented in the application.py. So basically this test follows the usual test structure. First of all, we instantiate a data frame, which will be our test data. Secondly, we define our expected result. Then we call the unit with the DF, so with the input data, and then we run an assert data frame equal and compare the actual result with the expected result. Now, as this, have, as this has come up in one of my coaching sessions um, to set up this Visual Studio Code integrated development environment using multiple modules. So with, uh, in other words, a test module and a source module, because as you may have noticed, we are importing from application. So from the application.py, we want to import the highest values per year, which is the unit which is imported, uh, which is uh, implemented there, because we have to call it down here as we would like to test it. Now the question is how we how can we execute this uh, first from the command line and then from the IDE. So let me head over to the terminal and start by creating the virtual environment. I will create it here from the terminal so that we know we also get an understanding um, how how we can execute this from the terminal. So that's how we would you do it without an IDE. So I say Python 3 and we use the package vnf and we simply create a virtual environment called vnf in the current directory. And then we can activate this by calling source bin activate. So now we are basically working within our virtual environment. Now within that we have a Python interpreter and we want to use the package pip uh, to install requirements and we're going to use a requirements file. So minus r requirements.txt um, tells pip to use the requirements file and I want to show you the requirements file. It actually contains PySpark as a dependency and then we also need setup tools pandas and pyarrow which are all used by the assert data frame equal functionality we are importing from PySpark. So pip will install that into our virtual environment on the terminal and therefore it has completed now and therefore we now have the virtual environment here in our directory. So it's here called vnf. And let's go back to the Visual Studio Code. And now it has already detected the virtual environment. So in the bottom right corner here, we can see that we are using the Python interpreter here and it's set to auto detect. And right next to that, we can see that it's using the vnf called vnf. And here we can see actually the path so it has detected Python 3.12 from the vnf, which is located at our current directory vnf bin Python. So that's the Python interpreter we use from the IDE. Now, if I go back to the terminal, we can ex actually execute our application simply by typing Python 3 and then source application.py, which should actually print the result to the console. And here's the result. So if we try the, the same thing with the test by typing Python 3 and then tests and then test application test.py, 
we will see that we get an error and it's saying module not found error and it cannot locate the application uh, module which we are trying to import which is the problem we are facing so how would we fix this on the command line and the solution is quite simple we have to set a environment variable called python path and we are going to set it to the python path that's actually a list of directories where python will search for um yeah source files and here we're going to add the current directory source and on a mac as a concatenation operator so as a separator of the list we use this colon um, symbol here so now we have instructed python to search on the path um, current directory source and all of python path and if we um, execute this one again this should work now and we already can see that here spark is running now and we should see that the tests are passing now now if you are currently learning spark i would like to point you to my academy which you can find at academy.philip-brunenberg.de you will find the link in the show notes and what i have here is basically some products where i help you to learn spark so for example there is a python and spark course there is an extensive course on mastering spark internals and there's also an individual coaching product which will consist of 12 weeks of one-on-one -on -one sessions where i teach you everything you will need to know to be a professional spark developer okay let's go ahead and do the same thing from visual studio code now if i go to application.py i can simply hit the run button up here and we can see what it's doing so it's basically using the vnf in our current working directory as well so vnf bin python and simply as the argument passes in the application.py script it's the very same thing we did on the command line and it completes now if i go to application test um, that's where we saw the problem if i hit the run button here it will not work and it will say give us the same error saying no module named application so what we need to do in our ide to get the same effect as we had on the command line i will show you how to configure the ide now so that it um, is able to execute these tests therefore i will create a new folder called dot uh, vs code so dot visual studio code and the dot means it's a hidden directory so it's usually managed by the visual studio code and within this directory i will create a file called settings.json and this settings.json file basically contains the user specific um, settings for our ide so it's within the vs code directory and it contains the settings we specify as users so as it's a json file we can put in some options here and i would show you the documentation where you can find these later so for now i would configure uh, terminal and something so here it's the setting is called terminal which is the thing that's running our python code dot integrated so we're talking about the in integrated terminal and for the integrated terminal we can set some environment just as we did on our other terminal by specifying the python path and here we, we use the on my mac i will use the terminal dot integrated dot env dot osx and here we can pass in um, environment variables and we would like to specify python path to be it's pretty much the same as we did on the command line python path so we use the entire python path and we prepend it with our custom setting so here we want to use source now within our ide visual studio code we can use some special variables for example there is a variable which will always be set in these settings or we can use them in these settings which is called workspace folder which will always refer to the workspace that we are working in so in this case at uh, this pyspark v as code project so this will instruct the terminal which runs our python code to actually include this python path which will include the source folder and here we are still lacking the separator so on a mac that will be the colon just as before so we are concatenating the source directory and the python path now one very very important thing before we um, run this 
or if you make changes here, you will have to stop the IDE's terminal so that it will load these settings again before you can run your application. Now, my terminal is stopped at the moment, so I will simply, no, it wasn't, so you can see what's happening. So it still doesn't find the module application. So therefore, I go, I focus this terminal and hit Control D, which will actually terminate the terminal. So, and on startup, it will load these settings again, which is quite tricky because sometimes you make the changes to the settings and it still doesn't work. But just keep in mind that you have to terminate the terminal just like I did. And now we can see that the tests are also running from within the IDE. And that's exactly what we were aiming to do. Now, as promised, I would like to show you where you can find these um, settings in the browser. So I am just here at code.visualstudio.com, which is the website, the official website of Visual Studio. And then you can find the documentation, so docs, and then there's a getting started guide. And within getting started, getting started, you can find the settings. Now, here is a lot of documentation about these settings, many of them documenting how to set them in the front end, which we don't want to do. Um, and down here, we can see the default settings. So here, basically all the settings are documented. And what we are searching for is integrated end OS X. And here you can see that there is this setting, which is usually empty. And it also documents what it does. So basically, it contains environment variables that will be added to the Visual Studio code processed uh, to be used by the terminal on Mac OS X. So if you are on Linux, you should use this or on Windows, you should use this configuration parameter. Um, yeah, and that's where you can find all of these settings. Now, having that said, I thank you for joining for this video. I hope you learned something and to see you next time. Until then, bye bye.